yeah, I'm going to be talking a lot about paradigm shift and the theme of Creative Mornings is now, so how my work is thinking about, you know, the changes we need to make today for um, our future. The classic boot shape, it's on all our road signs, the shape of Louisiana, but when we see the actual walkable land, you know, the, the basically the toe is missing from the boot, and I think we all can see where New Orleans is. New Orleans is actually um, a coastal city, though it doesn't appear as such on a, a map. And being from here in the last few years, I've been using my work as a way to think about how did we get here? You can go to the next slide. So one of the main reasons we've lost the toe on the boot is um, all of the extraction the oil and gas industry has taken from our states. The top map, the Department of Natural Resources puts out this map, shows you exactly all the pipelines running through the bottom of our state. And then um, the map on the top right is the offshore oil wells. And again, you can see on the bottom, the sort of on the left is what you'd see on like a, a road map and then the actual walkable land and overlaying that with all of the extraction, you can understand the connection between the oil and gas industry's impact on our landscape. And I think we're probably all familiar that there are other issues at play, but um, the oil and gas industry obviously has a huge impact in the loss of the land. And then we all know that burning fossil fuels makes a warmer climate, stronger hurricanes, we're on the edge of hurricane season, so we've not only been made more precarious to these storms, but these industries are responsible for increasing the, the threats from these storms. Um, go to the next slide. I'll just skip the slide. Um, so growing up in New Orleans, these industries are not just inextricable from our economy, they're also really enmeshed in our culture. And I grew up going to this aquarium, I'm sure you've all been to the Audubon Aquarium, and the main tank of the aquarium is built around an oil rig. And we're kind of raising our children to think, you know, this isn't just trash that these industries left in the ocean. These, these are good corporate citizens and they have donated these as habitats to the fish. And you can kind of see in the top image, there's like pipes on the ground. Um, and on the bottom image, you can see the prominent fossil fuel sponsorship. So we're sort of raising our children to think that these industries are a natural part of the landscape. This is the way things are. They've always been here. These are, these are good companies. Um, next slide. Um, so I didn't grow up thinking critically about all of this stuff, but in 2018, I participated in Fossil Free Fest, which was put on by Antenna Gallery and really thinking about the ethics and complexity of taking this money for arts and education and how we can think beyond this. And a really impactful part of that festival for me was the Toxic Tour, which the image on the left is not from that, but we went through Cancer Alley and toured a lot of frontline communities. Petrochemical America is another resource I really look at in my work. And so the top map is the river pre-colonization, pre-levees. The middle map is the river during the time of enslavement when all of those parcels of land were cut up into plantations. And then the bottom map is how the river is, looks now in Cancer Alley with all of this industry. And, you know, after the Civil War ended, formerly, a lot of formerly enslaved people moved just off the land of the former plantations and started these first free communities of color, and now those are um, the communities on the front lines for all of this pollution. And also, at the far right of the map is New Orleans, and I think uh, we think of Cancer Alley as between New Orleans and Baton Rouge and up there, but we're a part of it. It extends beyond us. The water that's being put out by all these facilities is our drinking water and the air doesn't stay there. So I also want to connect people to these issues. Um, you can start. Um, no. <laughs> um, no, we can go to actually start looking at my artwork. You can play this video. So this is an installation that I made for Fossil Free Fest. And materially, I'm starting to use, this is like recycled pipes, thinking about the pipelines. 
and then these planter shapes, which are made from sugarcane and plastic waste. And then I've planted them with um, vines, which over the course of the summer grew over this installation. And it's, you can't really see in this video, but the whole thing is powered by solar panels. So the lights in the installation come on at night that's powered by solar, and it's also harvesting rainwater to water itself. And then I got a grant to do this project and was able to work with this group of musicians who activated the installations. This is a solar-powered performance and just another way to bring people into the work and wanting the work to be this site where people could come together and think about these issues we face and in, in conversation think about what changes need to be made. Um, next slide. Um, so thinking materially post-fossil free fest, I also wanted to think about how to make my materials as specific to this landscape as possible and also as sustainable. Um, so I started making my own paper, which I call plastic cane, and it's a combination of sugarcane, um, bag ass, which is the byproduct of refining sugarcane, and sugarcane was a staple chattel slavery crop and one of the most dangerous crops for the enslaved people that were forced to harvest it. Um, I combine that with single-use disposable plastic, a lot of which um, the raw materials for this plastic are made upriver in Cancer Alley. And through the process of paper making, we can go to the next slide. So you can play this video. This is for Creative Mornings, wanting to show you all a little bit of my process. Can you, does it play? Oh wait, can you? No, go back, it should, that's like a video. This, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is the process of paper making. It's a little bit sped up, but that is me adding the fermented sugar cane to the vat, and then I collect plastic waste, just kind of a microactive environmental stewardship around my studio. Plastic waste is another renewable resource. Shred the plastic, add it to the vat, and then through the process of paper making, the sugar cane and the plastic and water combines it into this new material. And this is sort of how handmade paper is made. And the next step in this process is I would cooch it onto a felt and then weight that overnight. And the water and then the pressure locks the different fibers together. So like kind of alchemically creates a new material from these disparate materials. And I call that plastic cane, the sugar cane and the plastic, um, kind of bringing together these historical legacies to where we are today. Um, next slide. And then this is um, a drawing made on that plastic cane paper. Um, and this drawing is about a specific community in Laplace, uh, the concerned citizens of St. John. They're fighting the Denka plant, which is a plant that's releasing eight times the amount of a known carcinogen. And on the top is an image of this oak tree that is growing on the edge of the plant up in Laplace. And on the bottom is the image of the plant. And then in the middle, the roots kind of are, are intertwined, become this, this factory. And thinking about these issues, how inextricable um, it feels in Louisiana with oil and gas um, and also embodied emissions. Um, there's an elementary school 500 feet from this plant. So this, this tree is taking up all of those emissions, obviously, and thinking about what it lives, what it means to live near these facilities. And also, we're downriver. We're not that far. Like, this is also our issue. Um, next slide. And this is a detail of sort of how the plastic manifests. Like, if you see those shreds, like the blue flecks, um, so from further away, you can, like, read the image of the drawing, and then as you get closer, the image dissipates, and you can see the plastic, and you might recognize a brand or a piece of styrofoam and think about kind of your connection to these issues, and hopefully that is like a deeper burn of changes you can make, and then also collectively what we can, what we can push for. Um, next slide. And then this is just to give you a sense of scale. The drawings are usually quite large. Next slide. So in thinking about Fossil Free Fest, I really 
dug deep in my materials and wanted to be as fossil free with the materials I was choosing and then also thinking about my identity as an artist. Um, every New Orleans art space takes money from the Hellas Foundation, which I think we've all heard that name. And this is an issue for me um, because, you know, they're using my cultural capital to kind of art wash their reputation. The Hellas Foundation is essentially the PR firm for the Hellas Oil and Gas Company. And, you know, these, by giving money to, can you go back for a second, to these, um, that's okay, uh, cultural institutions, they're sort of giving themselves, like, a social license to operate. And most dangerously, they are censoring work. Um, the Hellas Foundation is allowing, is allowed to choose what art is shown in our cultural institutions. And I believe it's the role of the artist to be a mirror, to reflect back to our culture, to help us think critically and inspire action. And I know of two artists that were making work critical of oil and gas industry, and their work was not allowed to be shown in New Orleans art spaces. And I think that's a huge and dangerous problem. Um, go back and then, particularly <laughs> this art and AC campaign really gets my goat. So in 2017, 93 degrees or higher, free days in the museum. I guess there was too many 93 degree days. They bumped it up to 95 degree days in 2019. Um, I guess there was too many 95 degree days because now it's Sundays are free in July. And I, 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 art should be accessible to all people. I believe, like, believe in that, but I think there is clearly a cost with this and also I find it very ironic, like Hellas Oil and Gas Company, what is your responsibility for so many hot days? And um, I don't know, that just like really upset me. Um, next slide. So I, I wanted to uh, try and help people in New Orleans. I think we hear about Hellas Foundation on OZ and NPR and their name is all over and we don't, even, we don't know what this, what this company is, where this wealth that they're able to kind of like wash their name in art is from. So I, with Antenna and Healthy Goth, led these mapping projects in 2019, trying to understand exactly where these wells are, and a lot of them are near oysters, so what is the effect on oyster nurseries and also oil spills? Um, next slide. And this should be, have like a play, a little video. So this is a map that was made based on those mapping workshops, just showing you over time where all the Hellas wells are in Louisiana. And they're not just in Louisiana, they're also involved in fracking in North Dakota. Um, and interestingly enough, they're only giving money in New Orleans, so they are you know, affecting the environment, clearly, all around Louisiana. But if we think about those maps earlier, with all the land loss in the toe of our boot, you can see that Hellas is thickly in there. And this is not to say that Hellas is the only company that's operating there and they're not also the biggest company, but you know, they're the biggest name giving art and they're using money derived from this extraction to make their name look better and also choose what art is being shown. And this is the existential crisis of our time, global warming, and they're not allowing work to be shown that is critical of these issues, and that is a problem. Next slide. So and this is a video, too. Um, this is a project I made, sort of, the project in City Park had solar panels, um, and this is sort of the next generation of that project, and also wanting to have a piece um, that, creating my own platform to show work outside of these institutions. This is the next generation of the solar cart, which you can see the, the solar panels are on top and this white tank is rainwater harvesting, so it's collecting rainwater. So that's the solar cart, and so it's a mobile solar unit with the rainwater harvesting, and then my sculptures are riding alongside it. And then when I show this piece in New Orleans, it moves by pushing, so that's me and four other artists that make work about the environment or labor, and my mom is also helping, and it moves, this was like a three mile move from my studio to I had a residency at Longview and kind of moving the piece becomes also a performance piece and 
people, cars have to literally make space for us and kind of like reckon with us and question like, what is this? Um, and then it, this is where it kind of finally came to rest on the lawn of the museum. But yeah, definitely a physical act. Um, you can go to the next slide. And then this is how the installation, when it's fully unpacked. So on the right side, you see the solar panels and the sort of water tank and the platform becomes a bench. Like my sculptures had been riding there and then the sculptures connect and kind of create this like dystopian garden. Um, so you're sitting between the renewable resources and this kind of vision of what could happen to our landscape if we don't change course and wanting that to be this, this site for conversations. What, individual changes can we make and together obviously it's gonna be take a lot like collectively what can we push for next slide um this is the manifesto i guess that's a dirty word but wanting to have um this is a the design spread are open source hurricane season is coming up wanting to have like a renewable resource node how would you activate this what would you power who would help you push it um next slide and then this is my most recent body of work where I'm combining the language of drawing and the language of sculpture and creating pieces um, that are themselves ecosystems. They're planted with living plants. Um, next slide. And you can see now, so I'm using the paper more as a paper mache and using the language of pipes and making my own pipes. And now you can also see how in the paper all of the plastic is appearing. Um, next slide. And this piece is called Triblant, and the previous piece was called Flotant, which are both um, terms for this kind of floating marsh that's endemic to southern Louisiana. So it's a marsh that's not rooted, so it can rise and fall with like the water, and also wanting to reference these um, natural strategies, like how can we learn from the environment we're living in and prepare ourselves to be living in a more watery world next slide and this these also i'm retrofitting the pipes to become watering systems so also thinking about all of this infrastructure that's going to be around i think even as we're moving away from fossil fuels i can't imagine they're going to dismantle all this stuff like how could these have second lives and kind of modeling that with these watering systems and also plants as you know an idea for um resilience um Next slide. And then I'll just talk about, this is the last project I'll talk about. Um, so I have been making my own inks. I wasn't really, covered a lot of ground. I didn't really talk about that. Um, from oak galls, which is from oak trees. But um, my most recent project is using fossil fuel pollution, which unfortunately is also a renewable resource in Southern Louisiana to create um, an ink. And I've been working with Ms. Gail LaBeouf, who's on the left in the top image. And she is, a leader in Cancer Alley. She has a group called Inclusive Louisiana that fights petrochemical expansion and pollution. And she has helped me kind of identify sites of pollution and helped me um, come around and collect it. Well, she waits in the car, but I go collect the materials. Um, so this is outside of a coal export facility. On the top left, you can see kind of the mountains of coal. And then this is the ditch outside of the facility where coal is, is running into this ecosystem. And I collected the mud from this ditch. Next slide. And on the top, you can see I'm like drying out the mud. I grind it up in a mortar and pestle and then sipped it until it's a fine pigment. And that's what I'm using to create this ink and paint. And we're going to make banners for Inclusive Louisiana. This is an image from a previous art build, but to make a banner, to give the ink back to the community for protests or to have at their events. Um, next slide. And then also I'm, I'm starting to use the ink as another material in my work, thinking about kind of what can be an art material and how can this material sort of embody this message and change how we're thinking about this landscape and what is waste and also what is possible. Um, and this is a, addition of prints I created, and the ink was from that fossil fuel pollution ink. Um, and I have some prints available if anyone is interested. Um, next slide. I think that's, I think, yeah, so that, that is everything. Um, just on the theme of now, I wanted to kind of 
tie it all together, thinking about how, how, how we got here and moving forward, do we want to continue business as usual, these kind of industries and ways of thinking that have gotten us here, or can we like choose to think bigger and question where this money is coming from and co holding corporations accountable so that there is a Southern Louisiana for our children? Thank y'all. And also, there's some organizations, I like briefly mentioned different people, but activists doing really important work in this region um, and ways to get in touch with me. Um, thank you so much for your time.